art. The definition is as follows. The expression of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing work to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. While we are currently living in the era of contemporary art, one of the most important eras in art is the Harlem Renaissance movement. Beginning during the 1900s, African Americans would begin moving towards the Harlem area, including key figures such as W.E.B. Du Bois. By the 1920s, 300,000 African Americans would move into the area. This eventually led to art of all variety making their way into the movement. Painters such as Aaron Douglas, Lois Malou Jones, and Jacob Lawrence, and musical artists such as Louis Armstrong, Dick Webb, and Duke Ellington, and many more. Today, we see art continue to grow and evolve from all aspects, musical, visual art, and interactive media. And at North Carolina A&T State University, Dr. Hooker continues to shape the artists of today with his teaching. And the North Carolina A&T Art Show is used to showcase and display the young artists of today looking to develop their craft, share their creativity, and put their message out there to the world. Dr. Willie Hooker, Professor of Art, North Carolina A&T State University. My style of art is mixed media painting. My ideas and inspirations for art comes from contemporary African American artists like David C. Driscoll, Dr. John Biggers, and Faith Rango. David C. Driscoll examined the historical aspects of modern and contemporary African American art history. Dr. John Biggers' African American art reflects the African myths and legends of black culture. Faith Rango's African American art reflects her dissatisfaction with racism, gender inequality, and the absence of the black female image as subject matter in contemporary art. The art piece in the China Art Exhibition entitled West African Woman from Ghana represents a new narrative of contemporary African American art. The composition creates a aesthetic two-dimensional mixed media of a beautiful black woman from Ghana, Africa. The evolution of the black aesthetics has given African, as well as African American women, the quality to prevail with strength, dignity, and grace. Having my African American art displayed in China will help develop an international understanding of African American and Asian culture through the arts and humanities. Tell us a name, your name, and your major. Um, hi, my name is Jasmine, art name Black Sneakers, and I'm a senior at UT. Hi, I'm Ariana, my major is visual arts, I'm a concentration in media design. Hi, my name is Shay, I'm a visual art design student here at UT. My name is Ayana, and I am a visual media design major. Okay, my name is Sora Kinelli, and I'm a visual arts major. Um, my name is Sydney McCann, and I'm a visual arts major. My name is Amani Riley, and I am a visual arts major, and I mostly do paintings. My name is Nikia Hughes, and I'm a visual arts and media design major. Hello, I'm Elysia Grant. Uh, I am a visual media design major, which is like graphic design. Well, I'm Trinity Ibuka. Um, I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Uh, my name is Andrew White. I am originally from Manhattan, New York. My name is Nicholas Jones. I'm from Woodbridge, Virginia. Um, my name is Malachi Mitchell. Um, I'm a visual art and design student. Okay. Uh, my name is Micah Green. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'm a visual arts major. So this painting is named Apocalypta, and the concept is focused on uh, the female range, but in the sense of uh, how the world impacts her and how the people around her impact her, and that she can't contain anymore, so she instead decides to end the world because her anger is so great. So this one was just really a sense of release for me personally, because um, when I made this, I was not in a good headspace. And so it was a way to release the anger and upset and hurt that I was feeling at the time. So this is my um, portrait of Beyonce. Um, I just really like her music, so I decided to paint her, but I decided to use like, you know, bright colors, because that's just my style, to be honest. Um, I just wanted to make her very vibrant and just pop out on the canvas, so I made her bright, you know, orange and yellow, 
and I wanted to complement it with a complimentary color blue in the background to kind of just calm it down the background versus her like loud, you know, color of her skin and stuff. You chose Queen Bee, who is very recognizable. Mm -hmm. Why were you inspired by her? I really like her music. Like, I, like my mom listens to her like when I was growing up. So I was like, this is a perfect fit, and everybody likes her. And you know, she's just a big role model, to be honest, as a singer and just like as a person in general. So, like, what are some examples that how she inspires you? Let me see. So one thing I realized about her is that she's really resilient. Like I've seen like documentaries of her, like when she's doing like tours and um, concerts, and how hard she's worked. Like she works so hard to make sure everything is so perfect and everything just works like you know smoothly when it comes to her performances and stuff like that. And so that really like inspires me as an artist to really just push and make sure everything that I create is just amazing in like my you know perspective. Yes, there's three different pages. So this first one up here is called disassociation because it's a visual representation of what it's like to feel disassociated. This is a paradox because it's all my hands, but it's explaining how it feels to like argue with yourself or when you're thinking about two different things, overthinking and going over it too many times. And this last one is self-criticism because it's when you're picking at yourself, which is why it has state hands. So it's like all visual representation of different symptoms of different mental disorders. So a lot of me and my closest friends all struggle with the same like symptoms of these disorders, but not everybody knows how to explain it or what it feels like. So I felt like making it visual would be easier to explain it to people and to have conversations about it. So the painting is called The Ism. Um, the inspiration behind it is honestly a remake of Pablo Picasso's Seated Woman. Mm -hmm. So if you were to like look it up, you would see pretty much this, but it's like different color palette. Um, originally, I did this um, for a project about like making a statement about like some like mental health or just social issues. So I chose a social issue, which was colorism. Um, that's the first ism that you could take this to be. Um, the, all the different skin tones are pretty much used to show that you know there are women and people of different colors, and we should all just embrace that. Like, you know, one's not better than the other. One's not worse than the other. We're all equal. And equal. That's the first ism. The second ism could be racism. You know, the third ism is, could be cubism, since that's the style of art that it is as well. This art piece right now is called Flows. With flows, it was pretty much, I used it as a kind of way to express myself and express my feelings. With me, it's kind of piecing out different emotions throughout the whole year. And with happy emotions, medium emotions, and kind of sad emotions throughout me working on projects that may be a little bit too long for me or might be, you know, might be quick projects for me. Okay. And so, uh, you did the colors. Um, we got pink, red, orange, um, and the shapes. What went into Let's talk about the colors first. What went into you picking colors and then, it seems like the black color is sort of the centerpiece. Does that represent something? Yes, it does. I feel like, for me, I use it as like an emotional thing. A lot of people have, so for, for me, I use it as an emotional thing. A lot of people kind of have a lot of stuff that they hold inside of them, but they also show a lot of different colors outside. So for me, the colors on the outside pretty much show the perception of how people really show themselves. But then at the end of the day, people do go through a lot of stuff at the end of the day inside, internally, that a lot of people don't know about. In order to describe it, I would say the word Elysium, but mainly what it is and what kind of the concept is, is that, because this is also digital work, I made everybody, what was it, on like, it's mixed media paper. Okay. I made everybody like their own specific paintings with like their own little colors. Mm -hmm. I uploaded it to a computer. And then what is it, I started pulling like photos of them, the little, kind of ripped newspapers are supposed to represent the Bible without it being like ripped pages of a Bible. Okay. And then what is it? it was like I said, their favorite Bible quotes that help encourage them, that brings them like, that brings them peace and stuff. So 
all this is basically how I see them and how I feel about them. Um, I call it this painting archaic. Um, I believe it's because I encapsulated it with um, a lacquer, mm -hmm. and I the whole mission of it was to showcase black beauty. That's what I mostly geared towards to, anyways. So, um, yeah. Are women usually the centerpiece? Or do you yes. Women? Black beauty. Can you explain that? Like, why is that something that resonates with you? Because I guess we growing up being a black girl and, you know, get a lot talked down about a lot with the way our, our features are. I wanted to showcase that a lot throughout my work, but not in the normal manner. So that's why a lot of my work is just more thin lines and then, or more so wild lines to showcase them black lady's face so yeah um i like nature i like most animals and bugs and critters and stuff mm -hmm. this frog in particular it's not completely anatomically correct but it's supposed to be in reference to the panamanian golden frog okay um i'm panamanian my grandmother's from panama um so that frog well this painting in general is sort of a reference to my lineage and ancestry I have um, the color references in here are to my parents and me. The patterns and colors that I use to um, form this composition were inspired by Mola textile. It's a Panamanian folk art. Um, there are pieces of fabric that people use for clothing, sometimes artwork. They'll put it on pillows or frame it, etc. Um, but it's a traditional folk art from Panama. Um, that I wanted to sort of emulate in my oil paintings. Um, I usually use muted kind of sickly colors mm -hmm. and these are a lot brighter and vibrant compared to what I'm comfortable with um, because I wanted to evoke those mold latte styles. Um, so for me, a big motivation for me is when I do art is I like to listen to music and I'm usually in a, like back in 2000s when you go on like the music apps they usually have little background effects to it. Okay. And so this is like a whole visualizer effect I was trying to mimic. Mm -hmm. And like when it comes to colors, I don't, I normally tend to go towards cool tones. Okay. But I allowed, I wanted to like listen to the music and see how that, that could. Okay, what are people. some of the music that you listen to? Uh, hip hop, rock and roll, alternative am, music, what? I am an alternative pop guy. Okay, and what is that? It's um, a mixture of indie, indie alternative music and mm -hmm. alternative music. Um, and that's because I'm more like lyrical things. I like actually like knowing what the lyrics mean okay. and the meaning behind it. Uh, this title is The Cruci Crucifixion of Yeshua. Um, I did actual uh, tree bark or mulch just because I wanted to add mixed media and also um, bring the piece alive a little bit and uh, not just do a straight flat painting but um, have some elements to where it's you know it's 3d you can touch it you can feel it you can feel the presence of the actual uh, nature of it so that's why I use real tree okay so what is it about nature that helps your artwork particularly this piece here I think it just it's more of a connection for me. It, it feels like I'm more tapped into the art that I'm doing. If I incorporate other elements, real life elements into it, um, and you know, have it to where it, it pops, and it's not just me working on something that's flat, but it's me actually, you know, getting on my hands and knees and putting it into you know specific places and things like that. I feel like I would embrace the artwork more when I do uh, a little extra work in it. Um, so, uh, I want the, in terms of the color contrast to be, um, you know, pretty dark, um, in turn, and then the, the bright focus of being the apple, um, the brightest thing on this, on the, uh, in the piece of work. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the tree, uh, there's not really a specific type of tree it is. I just didn't want no leaves on it. It's to represent kind of, um, not, not death, but like just the tree is, it, the tree is, is. It's trying to stay alive, be, and the, the main focus of it is um, the about Black history mainly. Okay. In terms of um, like the uh, 
the noose. Okay. Spring. I was going. I was going to point that out. Uh, yeah. The significance of the noose, uh, and this gentleman eating an apple from the tree. Is that like providing life? To you know, trying to uplift Black history instead of the the noose represents the old past. The fruit is something that's very vibrant. Yes, sir. Um, so basically, the um, it also kind of represents uh, knowledge as well. Okay. Um, and. Obviously, it's a young kid eating the apple, and a lot of the uh, black history isn't really being taught as in, in schools okay. anymore, and that's kind of the significance of that. Thing, um, that was actually unintentional as I was creating this piece. Um, her hair was supposed to be full. I was going for, of course, you know, the black culture, just, you know, kind of describing and showcasing, you know, the gravity in our hair and what our hair uh, represents, you know. Our, our black culture and it just I don't know as I was because this is all charcoal besides the color mm -hmm. but as I was coloring up I was coloring up upwards in her hair and I just formed the buildings and I just seen them as I was just coloring and I was like wow maybe I should actually keep it this way you know this kind of adds a different dimension to it and it mm -hmm. adds more depth okay. um, to the piece itself so. okay so let's um, well me personally me just kind of my background and just kind of where I come from. Um, my mom is a cosmetologist as well, outside of the other things that she does as well. So that just kind of played a big part um, growing up for me. Mm -hmm. And then just nowadays, you know, girls and just females in general are just so um, vibrant, you know, with the way that we express ourselves, mm -hmm. just the way we carry ourselves. Our different forms of style, and I mm -hmm. know that again nowadays. Well, today, you know, lashes are a big thing. You know? Yeah, I, I understand <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. I, it's all me because pretty much it's a portrait of myself, and it shows like my culture behind me. So I'm Puerto Rican and Filipino, and I really just want to like express that in my art for the semester. And so I got like the natural uh, flowers for each country. So I got. Sebaguira, uh, which is Port, um, Philippines flower, and then there's Puerto Maga, which is Puerto Rico's flowers, and that's the flowers that go on my head. On Echo of Purpose, and this um, print is digital print I did. There's um, Angela Davis, Debbie Allen, and Miss Joanne Hickenbooth, both of them. They're all pioneers in different fields. We have a political activist, a dancer, choreographer, and an astronaut. And the title echo the purpose because it makes a piece of representation for young black kids, um, females, and men in the world. And so they're all pioneers, um, pioneering in their different fields. I want um, kids to be inspired and just to see that there's people out there who are out just like us, um, skin, that you can also have your dreams and do what you want to do and grow up to be what to be. And the color scheme of my shows is, is primary colors. I've read blue and yellow, Superman, he's in primary colors. I like a positive um, representation in the world. So I use them as primary colors to be like a primary positive representation for black kids in America and all over the world. Uh, there is, because I grew up in high school predominantly white and I didn't really get in speak out on be who myself was. Um, my dressing and who I was back then was a bit more closed off. And then coming to an HBCU, I've changed more and embracing my um, culture and adapted to who I am more now. So my art is like an expression of that. I do use a lot of women in my art pieces because it's like a reflection of myself. I feel like I feel like you're here, you um, rose up from what you had and now you're represented in art. The color contrast is I can see how you got echo with a purpose, uh, and then you have the individual artist. Um, how did you pick the contrast to put? Is that Angela Davis in the middle? Uh, yes. Why is why is she sort of the centerpiece of your artwork? Uh, she's like a big. You see her like the news. Angela Davis. How she um, a lot of the work she's done is very inspiring. So I just put her in like the center. It was started out as totally something different, but I'm not sure really what it was supposed to be. But when I go about picking colors, I just pick whatever I see. It's like, mm, I haven't used this color in a while. I'm just gonna pick this today. It's never really a planned out thought. I see a person, I'm gonna 
Twitter, Instagram. Oh, she's beautiful. I want to take a picture of it and go to Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's really my next question. Your inspiration is it from people you know personally, or could it just be someone walking down the street? Just someone walking down the street. No, I well, can I get a picture, or I'll just need a picture, or it's on Twitter, and I'll just grab it from there and I'll go from there. And just do it up, do it. Mm -hmm. Um, me personally, I I can honestly say it can be frowned upon sometimes. Of course, by our others that don't look like us, okay. they express themselves as much as we do. Um, I do typically think that we bring a certain type of vibrancy and a certain type of vibe um, to the world, you know, all together. And also, um, I don't know, I just, I typically like to shine a light on that as well. Mm -hmm. I do think um, it plays a huge role in my creative process as well because this is what I'm around. Um, but in a most positive, impactful way though, because I feel like we just bring a different element you know, just, just to anything that we do. And I feel like we also make a statement with certain colors and certain things that we add to our style. Mm -hmm. um, just, yeah. The cowrie shells mm -hmm. um, are in reference to my African lineage. Mm -hmm. um, I always just call myself black because my family doesn't really know what parts of Africa we're from unless mm -hmm. we look at our 23andMe results. But I think as a black person growing up in America, even now I have the calorie shells on, we kind of use it to adorn ourselves in beauty. And um, the symbolism of it is, it means uh, prosperity, like good fortune. It, um, it's kind of like good luck and it has a lot of other deeper meanings. People use it for divination sometimes in the Yoruba culture. Okay. My, um, my father and my godmother it's kind of two different sides of my family they practice yorba um and that's where the color the rings of color come from those are um references to the yorba religion practice um this represents the crucifixion of yeshua uh that's the title um and what is yeshua good friday yeshua is a hebrew name for jesus okay um so yeah um uh yeshua is a hebrew name for jesus but i, I use that uh, in order to um, go back to the roots, go back to uh, the you know true meaning of the name. So uh, it represents the Good Friday um, in uh, American culture, the Easter weekend. You have Good Friday, you have Resurrection Sunday. So I depicted Good Friday on both of these pieces, uh, but in this one, it's more so of a um, I guess first person kind of view to mm -hmm. where it's up close you can see the tree or the cross um you can see the hands of the roman soldiers that are you know preparing uh for the crucifixion and the nailing to the tree or the cross um afrofuturism inspires me because it connects both the past and present and the future so um because a lot of the art or most art that i grew up seeing but mostly focus on the past and i like to look towards the future and present and I also do like a lot of sci-fi stuff. So when you combine both the future, especially when it gives you hope and optimism for the black community, and then combine the sci-fi, it just makes it like a whole new genre of exploring what to create and how you wanna go about your creations and your visions. Um, and how I go more into my work, um, a lot of Afrofuture is colorful. Uh, it speaks on like how, like it's very emotive, but also it speaks on like how you want to go about in the future, how you want to uh, speak on how you feel. So, and that's how I incorporate it, especially like clothing wise, because it does seem like, you know, kind of like old century, but I did want to incorporate at least some futuristic aspects to what she was wearing. And the oil one, what made you choose this type of medium? Um, oil was kind of like my first love. <laughs> oh, actually acrylic was, but once I got into oil, I saw how smooth and like buttery it was, and how much I can manipulate it to um, fit how I want my visions to come out on canvas. It was just a whole new world to explore. Yeah. Um, because usually the people who care about this the most are the ones who ask how how do they feel and how can they help us. Mm -hmm. But for them to be able to help us, they don't really understand it first. But sometimes we don't really understand what we're going through, especially when we're just associated because it just feels like we're not there. 
Mm -hmm. So from there, I just wanted to kind of start the conversation, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't end there. Okay. So the colors that you use, uh, why was it important to use those kind of colors to kind of get people to pay close attention to your artwork? Okay. So a lot of people that know me, it's like my personality is very colorful. Okay. And a lot of my other art that's less serious has more color to it. Mm -hmm. But because this was a more serious topic, I decided to use like skin tones and more calmed down colors so okay. that they can look more into it instead of just looking at the colors that I use. I don't know, I use very like culture and I like learning about other people's culture and stuff like that. But I before I can learn other people's culture and stuff like that and understand it, I gotta learn about myself first and where my family comes from. And so I was doing a lot of research since a lot of my family their first gen that came over here. Like my dad was born in the Philippines, and then he was the first one over here for his family. And so my mother came, and so I didn't know before what they went through before they came over here. And I don't know, it's just a lot of things that catches my eye, definitely like flowers and nature. I usually do landscapes, but since I want to do portraits and I still want to incorporate the nature into it, I wanted to go with flowers. So this art piece is called the Visualizer, and it all stems from this original piece right here. Okay. Um, the whole purpose behind it was for me to create this interconnecting um, mind space idea mm -hmm. of overlap, like what will look like inside your mind. Mm -hmm. And so the way I went about it is I would usually play any type of music, and I would with a base color template or like a base mood. Mm -hmm and I would let the colors blend in together and see what they would make with it. Um, in my artwork, I like to put photos on all people in general. I just feel like um, us as people are very important and like special. So like, I think mm -hmm. that is a, I like to just draw attention to the person and make them look very special. So like, in this case, um, she is very uh, popular as a person. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely culture, just like my everyday experiences, sort of. Like, I mean, obviously as a black woman, like I deal with racism and colorism like a lot. So, and it's kind of ingrained in the black community. Like, a lot of times we're colored. Like, you know, we experience colorism and we say colors things, and it's you don't know, mean to. It's just you know, part of the culture and the way things go. Just old things that people say sometimes. So yeah, it's really based off mostly experience. When it came to like their color choices, for me, like I said, it's once again like how I see them. Like my brother's like this kind of like greenish yellow color for me for some reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But like, what is it? My mom, she's always like her favorite color, like earth tones and like how it's in her like with like oranges and stuff and blues. And then my dad is blue because that's one of his like favorite colors. And then also like. The orange kind of goes with it. It's like, what do you call those colors? Like complementary colors. Because mm -hmm. when she completes him, she's orange, he's blue. I like that's his favorite color. And then my sister, she has like this like fiery thing about her. So she's like this like bright red okay. for her because she's very like in your face, extroverted. And then like I said, if you go back to my brother, it's like he's in your face, but for like the green, it's more like he's like he's in your face, but he's like the queen. Yes, she does look scary, <laughs> but it's more so that I want people to like relate to me since like I can see your pain, I can see your hurt, especially if you are also a woman or black woman. I know you're hurting and your hurt is very justified. It's valid and it's understood. So if you want to destroy the world, I get it. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Just one word to describe your artwork. Um, I would say energy. Um, well, because of the colors, because you know, like when I think of energy, I think of bright colors, and then also like the lines around it is very, you know, uh, I, think, I don't know what the word is like, it just creates kind of movement in the piece as well. So, um, I guess I'll probably try to say inspiring, supernatural. Um, for me personally, I don't like things in its base form. Okay. I always try to warp or alter something into a more group, um, rugged. Right, get 
something more like dark tone in like that gets people questioning the motive behind this. I guess personal. This one is called a journal entry concerning lineage. So okay, I kind of used it. I'm not good at writing journal entries, but this was like me writing about where I come from and what made me. I guess in one word to describe my art, me. Very Elysium. This is like I just took it now, but um. This is very, if you ever see my work, it's very graphic design, almost like commodity. You probably wouldn't be able to notice based off of this piece, this is like something very different from what I usually do. But um, usually I would probably say like abstraction. Ooh, conversational. Okay, so what are the kind of works that you would do with Echo? Uh, uh, something that you feel passionate about in your area. You have Black Lives Matter, uh, you have you know, Me Too movement, you have all these movements. So what is something that you would create that echoes with a purpose so people could stand behind the meaning of this artwork? Uh, my other artworks is not just based off of black people. I also have work um, inspired by the camp style. Camp style just being ironically for every, everyday items, just extravagating that. Mm -hmm. And so like those works, it's spoken for just not just people of color, but everyone, mm -hmm. and just be more expressive, more in like the fashion style, not just like um, yourself. So I use this like fashion and just big extravagant clothes that I like, just like to be open and just be hi, I'm here, you see me, and just open up to the world. Okay, different. I'll say different. Okay, why do you say different? What makes your what makes this art piece different from everybody else's? I feel like everybody else, everybody else has a kind of a concept behind their stuff. I don't really have a concept outside of just emotions. For okay. me, it's just how you feel. And anybody can look at this piece and feel different ways about it, which is the whole point. It's for you to interpret how you want to. Mm -hmm. Like some people might think, like there's so many other things you could think about it within, within this art piece. Mm -hmm. So when people come up, that's how I kind of want them to think, I want them to think about you know, what's really so, happening. So um, it's just my view as someone who walks in this lifestyle as um, uh, looking back at a historical event. Um, and it's really just a piece that um, won't only connect to me, but anyone else, you know, that might be walking this lifestyle. So I think that um, just looking back at it, uh, it's meant to be a depiction of something that happened that's significant to many people around the world. Okay. So when you particularly say space, you're not saying that that's makes you comfortable, but you're, you're always going to go beyond, take that next step. And if people like your artwork and appreciate it, then you've, you, you've accomplished your objective by going beyond the norm. Yes, it continues to get me to be uncomfortable with okay. everything that I do. So like all of these paintings, I was uncomfortable doing them at one point. And I'm going to be comfortable with them. So I know now my next step, my next paintings will continue to make me uncomfortable. It's the professor and he does teach African American art, so learning about that. Because in my um, high school, we only really learn about the European arts, um, Picasso, um, France artists. So we haven't really learned about, like, in my opinion, black artists. We're coming here learning about black artists a lot that I have never learned before. Really opened my eyes and see that we did um, create a lot of things, and like there's a lot of representation that I haven't seen in the world. So, um, further your career as an artist. Just keep doing outside the norm. That's what he he's seen that I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. and he kept pushing me to do just that. Mm -hmm. So I know that from you know I'll take that with me for wherever I go. Comes to Hooker when it comes to making art. He has pushed me out of my comfort zone because I'm used to you know graphic design is on a computer. Mm -hmm. This man was like for the art show. He said I'm gonna need you to kind of like push it like give me something you're not used to. Okay. And that's how we got here because was it we had a lady Adrena Coleman she had quilts and stuff mm -hmm. and I kind of was like well how can I do something like that and they kind of pushed me to like what is it just do your art like it could be it's this but like think bigger and better like what it could be it's been good he's definitely pushed me to do a lot of things that I really didn't think I could do he always told me to go bigger and so for me I don't want to go bigger but I still do go bigger just you know to kind of break that barrier of working small and kind of getting out of my comfort zone. These seniors have shown that their art contain personality, story, messaging, and cultural influences. And when it comes to the African-American community, 
we would like to leave you with one final message from the words of Dr. Hooker, who state that African American art is a splendid quality that has given African Americans the strength to prevail with the strength, dignity, and grace.